we're jumping into game number three here. Amber Riddle versus Florida Gulf Coast University. It's tied up one to one. We're going to move into Druid versus Mage. And this is one of those tricky opening hands to Druid where you have Darnassus Aspirant and you have Wild Growth. And so you can accelerate past your three mana mark. But you have Shaden X Ramus in your hand as well. How do you mulligan this hand and why? Hmm. It's a tough question. <laughs> really is a tough question. <laughs> TJ's like, I'm not even going to try to answer it. All right, so this is, <laughs> it seems simple, but it's probably one of the toughest mulligans you can do. Um, Darnassus Aspirin actually makes uh, Druid a lot, uh, I want to say more interactive. It makes the, the choices tougher. Before uh, before Darnassus Aspirin came, Druid sort of played itself. You just sort of played the strongest minion on curve, but now you have legitimate decisions that you have to make based off the situation. One to play Wild Growth first, one to play Darnassus Aspirant first, um, things like that. You really have to plan ahead. Or sometimes even keep your whole opening hand. They're going to go with both the Aspirant, the Wild Growth, and the Shade Next Robin. It could end up being clunky, though. Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> innervate. Oh, my Well, see, goodness. the Innervate actually makes this draw a lot better now because they yeah. can Innervate the turn one Shade and then follow up with the double ramp spells and hope to be picking up that five to seven mana range of minions that's left in their deck. That Innervate might have made this hand into just a complete blowout in the right situations. For the Gulf Coast, though, they have no shortage of ways to start to fight back. They already have turn one Mana Worm. They're going to hide behind the Mirror Image. They get to follow this up with a two and a three drop. This is looking fantastic for them as well. Yes, it is. And uh, Water Elemental is an interesting card uh, to place into Temple Mage. A lot of times it's replaced. Um, it's put in the deck for Pilot of Treaders. Um, sometimes Water Elemental uh, is better in some situations, uh, especially against weapon classes. Against Secret Paladin, uh, there's an argument for Pilot of Treader because you need sort of the stickiness, but Six Toughness can a lot of times get you through those situations. Yeah, and the other thing too is that it's shutting off weapon swings. Yeah. Uh, when you find yourself in a situation where you're freezing a player relying on weapons to get the job done, you oftentimes can have a minion that just goes unchecked the entirety of the game, and it gets so much repetitive damage that you're just going to win from it. Uh -huh. TJ recoiled at the interesting. He's like, I just realized it was Medivh. Oh, God, it's Medivh. And so they're just going to go with Sorcerer's Apprentice here. I mean, not really much else for them. Uh, they're just playing on curve at this point. And we're going to see if Embry Riddle can answer this board state. And right now, this is looking pretty gosh darn scary. They're going to swipe right away to try to keep a Mana Worm in check. Mana Worms can get out of control pretty quickly. And a lot of times what Temple may just rely on is Using their early creatures and their early tempo to get you low enough to by the time you stabilize, you're either dead or almost dead. Wanted. What if Embry Riddle got a swipe here? <laughs> a shiv and oh no, a, a demon, demon fire. fire. Yep. I mean, demon fire is not like demon fuse where you have to have a demon. Demon fire you can use as just sort of like a, a two damage poke. Yeah, two damage to a minion or give a friendly demon plus two plus two. Yeah. And so, as you can imagine, Druids don't have many demons in their decks. Uh, so that is just a two damage spell they have at the moment. But the bigger question is, how do they begin to fight back against this tempo? Oh, they have this shade that's growing, but they're taking a bit of damage in the meantime, and Florida Gulf Coast seems to be taking initiative every single time that they pass. Those two mirror images um, really putting a lot of... of little tiny speed bumps in front of Embry Riddle. They don't want to have a way to actually start breaking through just yet. Yeah. They also might be confused that those mirror images are Jaina. <laughs> and they're fighting against Medivh. This is a rare scenario. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was my mind being yeah. blown. <laughs> I picture you. It, it was easy for you because I made the hand motions, but for the audience <laughs> watching at home. <laughs> I'm picturing the Jeff for the guy. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like the firework, the the, the, uh, like the supernovas ah, are going missed, off. Missed Halloween costume. <laughs> how, yeah. how would you build that? <laughs> I would just walk around doing the motion. I wouldn't even dress up. <laughs> just put like a, a painting of stars behind me. You know. Okay, here's what you do. You know those party poppers Throw glitter that like spew the glitter everywhere. Yeah. You have like a bunch of those attached to your back, and you make the motion. You pull the string, and the confetti pops everywhere. <laughs> uh, too <laughs> great, but too much work. <laughs> Dude, those things are like 26 cents a piece. I know. Oh, wow. This water elemental could pose a problem because there's no way to deal with it. Those mirror images are still in the way. Ember Riddle, say goodbye to your hero power. Yeah, I, I think that in a spot like this, this Innervate, unlikely to grab a lot of value. 
But right now, you can actually nab something pretty valuable with it by wrathing the Spell Slinger uh, and picking up a card from it. Because they have the Azure Drake, they got that extra spell power. So you can take care of the 3-2 and, and continue to stem this bleeding. And I think that's where their game plan has to be right now. They just have to make sure they're not taking too much damage and rely on the power of their draws to carry them through. Dr. Boom is probably one of the best pickups in their deck going into turn seven. Well, you say that, but Florida Gulf Coast draws a fireball straight away. And so they'll continue to have the right answers in the right situations. But this is a turn for them where they have a lot of options on how to proceed on this. And that shade is still looming at the moment. So there's not really a lot of telling them which exact direction they're going to go. Looks like they're going to continue to check the board position as much as they can. And every single time they continue to, to extend their minion lead, it's creating a big problem for Embry Riddle. Druids don't handle a ton of pressure very well. They yeah. usually like to go minion for minion, but when you get so many out, they just don't really have an effective way to push through. But that's a really weak turn for Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah, overall, it's very weak. A mana worm, and then basically they just trade it in to the, um, to the Azure Drake and drew a card. That's a super weak turn. They're not really gaining any tempo, which is what the deck is made for. They do get further into their deck, but their next turn is going to be awkward too because they don't have enough mana to play Flame Waker plus, you know, a powerful spell. They can play like another mirror image and then ping, but with Lothab coming down. The Lothab is actually kind of a blessing for in disguise for them too because now this gives them time to play that Sludge Belt. Before, <laughs> it makes their decision easy. Yeah, I mean, before they were going to have to likely Fireball uh, the Doctor Boom mm -hmm. and actually Embry Riddle making great use of this Lothab. They bring the Shade out of Stealth this turn, knowing that it can't get Polymorphed, it's not going to get Fireballed. They know that this 7-7 can just start being a nuisance for Florida Gulf Coast. And now staring down this board presence, uh, and once again, not really a strong play, Embry-Riddle may have bought their ticket back in this game. Yeah, we'll have to see what their next couple draws are going to be with just Dr. Boo in their hand. I think they might be able to put on some hurt. I think Florida Gulf Coast realizes this, and they're just going to say, you know what? Just Time pile a bunch high. of damage on the face, hope we can close it out. Yeah, I mean, initially it looked like Embry-Riddle may have kind of given something over to Florida Gulf Coast, but pulling that shade out of Stealth and just killing an extra mirror entity, actually very critical given that they're frozen this turn. They wouldn't have been able to use their hero power to clear it out. Now they have better attacks available to them. So uh, because of that one single attack, the game really changed. Yeah, and they knew that they were safe to bring it out because it, it wasn't vulnerable to removal because they knew they had the low theft uh, uh, effect. Uh, protecting it. So, <laughs> I mean, it feels a little bit bad to throw that 8-8 eight, eight shade <laughs> into a 1-2 slime. Shade's about as... That shade's King Crush size right now. It's a slime. It's like a big anyway. T-Rex. Yeah. This is... That Sludge Belcher's like like David Goldblum Sludge Belcher from like, from like Jurassic Park. It's like, hey! Hey, over here! <laughs> <laughs> then like the one two slimes like the lawyer at the end. <laughs> oh my. Just gets crushed by this T Rex sized shaded X Robin. Why did he have taunt though? <laughs> oh, because he, he, he was a lawyer. Because he was because he had the flare. Oh, okay, yeah, he was yeah, taunting yeah. the T Rex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, they're gonna have to have some pretty sick flame waker. Do you risk the flame waker at this point? I think. I mean, Wakes. the safe play is just use your hero power to finish off the shade, and then hide behind the mirror images, hope that's good enough. Yeah. I mean, your opponent's got one card in hand. You might be feeling pretty good about trading in this situation. I mean, next turn you can still play two Flame Wakers and the Unstable Portal. Uh, to be honest, my play would be double Flame Waker Mirror Image. Wow, that's a, that's a bold move, Cotton. <sighs> Wait, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it takes it back. TJ would have already dragged the cards out on the board and then afterwards going, oh, I shouldn't have done that. You're like, you're like the guy who eats like way too many uh, plates at the, like the Chinese buffet and then afterwards you're like, I shouldn't have eaten that many plates. We're like, well, we told you to stop. If I ate them in like one second. <laughs> oh, wait, just kidding. Oh, no, I already ate them. I, for some reason in my head, I thought it would spawn four me <laughs> images. <laughs> it was like, oh, it lines up perfectly. No. Yeah, but they're going to continue the damage push as well, not trading with the Aspirant. They don't think that the mana is critical at this point. Uh, I think it's a, the right call by them. They are losing a mirror image in the process. But again, their sights now are set strictly on Flame Waker, Flame Waker, Unstable Portal, and hope that that's the final push to end the game. But Embry Riddle has Dr. Boom in their hand at the moment. So we're going to find out what? if Florida Gulf Coast push is going to be enough or if Embry Riddle can recover. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be enough. They don't have any more burn spells. 
They're really going to have to get something crucial from the unstable portal or draw a burn spell off the top. Everyone looks like they're considering using Keeper of the Grove in this spot and taking out the Mana Worm, and that would be an extremely defensive play at this point. I mean, your opponent is posturing very aggressively, but they also just fireballed one of your minions. Yeah. And so I think at this point, it's relatively oh, unlikely that they can continue to burst you, given that they fireballed a minion instead of you. You need to get that Doctor Boom out of your hand. Yeah, you, I, you have to. They're gonna make they're gonna make the so defensive. super defensive play here. They did this in the last game too when they were playing Paladin. That turn where they had Doctor Boom. Oh no! Oh, no, <laughs> that's so rough. The Florida Gulf Coast draws Fireball here. They can Fireball for six and kill a minion. Instead, it's gonna be Arcane Intellect. And so I think their play is still cemented. I mean, they had pretty much made their decision prior to this moment. And it's really the only thing left. The Unstable Portal, you know, it could change some things, but what minion really changes this board position? Yeah, and with four with four of these, wouldn't they have loved to play that prior to these <laughs> Waker shots? And no minions get killed by it. So instead, Embry Riddle now with a, with a chance to change this game, but that Flame Guard could still come back to bite them. The Wrath Guard. Wraith Guard? Wrath Guard? Mm hmm Yep. I actually forgot the spelling on that card. Nope, you got it. One of those. Either way now, with Wrath and Dr. Boo, I mean, both of these cards are getting played this turn, right? I wonder if we can get our spectator to mouse over it. Nope. That's a no. Yeah, you got to trade with the, with the Frothing Observer. I think it poses too much of a threat at the moment. But they're taking damage in the meantime. Now, they know one Fireball is gone, and they know there's only one card in the hand of Florida Gulf Coast, so... Wrath Guard. I had it right the first time. Wrath Guard. I knew I should have stuck with my instinct. Thanks, Spectator. You're the real MVP. Yep. Shoutouts to the Spectators here at ESL. <laughs> the Spectators of the world. <laughs> they bring us eSports, man. They do. Without those guys, we, we just wouldn't have anything. <laughs> so it's not going to be the Wrath this turn. They don't have a, a, a reason to Wrath this turn, just uh, the extra hero power, but... Once again, every riddle, it looks like they've weathered the storm. Florida Gulf Coast is going to need some hot, hot heat from this arcane intellect and unstable portal. All right, well, Embry, or sorry, Florida Gulf Coast is still at 27 health. So they have this turn plus probably one more um, in order to try and find the burn necessary. But you start off with unstable portal. Sequencing matters here, too. I think, I think you start off by killing the 2-2. Two -two. I think it's a good call. They're going to go with the Arcane Yint, though. They want to Fallen dig. Fallen Hero. Fallen Hero is a really interesting one. Oh. Well, as much as Flame Waker wants to kill Dr. Boom, that's a that's an uphill battle. Yeah. All right. Oh, a War Golem. That's almost as good as Dr. Boom. It's, it's only they hit two Wisps. <laughs> that exploded. I mean, I don't even know if War Golems, I yeah. guess it is, because it's it definitely into, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, because here's the thing, Embry Riddle's got to be worried about the damage of that card. It's basically like BGH. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Seven mana, seven, seven. Three mana, four, two, that kills a minion with seven or more power. And speaking of BGH, this Ancient of Lore could pick up one. That is absolutely true at the moment. Embry Riddle, uh, once again, they're going to have to weigh their options on this. So this game has wrath. been so back and forth. I mean, it looked like there was potential for either side to really run away with it. But, you know, a couple of, of draws have really changed the way this looks. Yeah, I think Ancient of Lore is actually one of the best draws on the deck. Wow. You talk about a good roll on that boom bot. Oh, no! Maybe they could get BGH! Maybe they don't have BGH in the That's deck. That's true. Yeah, I mean, that trade a, indicates to me that they don't have BGH. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of aggressive decks that are rolling around right now. And that card is one of the worst ones versus the aggressive builds. It's yeah. a possibility it's been cut. I mean, when was the last time we saw a handlock deck? Life Coach was the only player in the top 16 playing handlock. Yeah. Without a bet. There's that fireball, but the damage might just be too little too late. It's possible. So you can play Sludge Belcher, Fallen Hero, and ping the Ancient of Lore so that when it trades into your Sludge Belcher, it dies. Or you could just fireball the Ancient of Lore and play the Sludge Belcher uncontested. But I feel like you need that burn. Yeah, I feel like they just want to start getting the ball rolling on this uh, this Fallen Hero. Just make sure they get as much value from it as possible. Because they're working on pretty slim pickings at the moment. And at this point, now they're fighting an uphill battle versus the card advantage. So Embry Riddle, I mean, it looks like they have made the full recovery. 
What could Florida Gulf Coast take off the top that could get them back in this game? Power Dr. Boom? Oh, <laughs> a card that's actually in their deck, though. Dr. Boom seems like it fits the bill. Yeah. Arkham Gentinitis is pretty useless. They could just play it on an empty board and hope that Ember Riddle doesn't have an answer to it. Would they have another option other than to play the rock? The uh, Archmage, should they draw it? I they think could they try and wait one it. turn yeah. to try and pick up a spell. That's actually a lot of burn. That's nine points of damage in hand right now. Oh. Ten with on board, eleven with the hero power. Where are they finding room for these cards? Fallen hero, knife juggler? I mean, yeah, oh, they took out their secrets, maybe. That, uh, we haven't, did we see a mad scientist? Not this game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We've not seen a mad scientist this game. That little, Those little changes coming into effect right now. That feels interesting because secrets are usually pretty effective against um, druids. The only thing is that Mad Scientist isn't that great against druids anymore because it just gets traded into by Darnassus Aspirant. Yeah. And Mirror Entity, they can throw Darnassus Aspirant into Mirror Entities to effectively destroy one of your mana <laughs> yeah. crystals. Which so, could be absolutely devastating. I feel like they just uh, went back um, and just took the secrets out of their deck. Now, they, despite the amount of burst damage they have, I still think it's wise to take care of the Azure Drake. You're going to have a Knife Juggler in play, which doesn't have an immediate threat. You have a one you Taunt that isn't immediately threatened. And are you really going to burst through with the damage if you hold on to it right now? You know, that's a big question to ask yourself. Maybe they want to risk it and just hope that every Riddle doesn't have a way to push through this one two, But they just happen to have it, and they even pick up an alternate way to do it. So everything falling their way right now. With Florida Gulf Coast, a Fireball is the only card that would really get them out of this situation. I'm sorry, Frostbolt would do it too. In this situation, they don't have any more natural fireballs. They do have a frostbolt left in the deck. If they pick up a frostbolt, they it's 15 bursts. So it looks like frostbolt or bust at this point. No, like said, only, they've already used the fireball. No, 12, 13. Oh 13 my gosh, the hero power puts them one off. Yeah. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, they still can't kill most of the time whatever comes out of that pot of Shredder, so something like a Savage Roar would kill them. Oh, no. Well, you can't kill that one, but the 2-3 uh, stealth, I think pretty inconsequential at this point. I think this game is really going to boil down to whether or not Florida Gulf Coast can draw the damage to end this game. Because at this point, they, they're they giving initiative to Embry Riddle. They do not have a way to, to develop this board. Yeah. So they're just they're hoping that the, their deck gives them the right draws. And, you know, it's, it's just in Fate's hands at this point. Wow. Wow. Look at the Oh, my goodness. That is, some, that is some great foresight from Florida Gulf Coast. If they had actually cut the secrets from this deck. Just because they thought that Embry Riddle would put in a Kazan Mystic? <laughs> they're like, oh, they're going to put in a Kazan Mystic. Maybe they scouted him in previous weeks. Who knows? Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. You know, maybe, they, maybe they've even practiced together or played against each other at some point, too. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I would say in the Collegiate event, you know, where, where are you getting your practice from? Why not compete against the other best performing teams? The ladder. Definitely a place to, to play some games. Forged in the depths <laughs> of the ladder. Every riddle, I think, is going to heal in this spot. I mean, they have more than enough cards to end this game. Nope. They're going to pick up two more, though. They realize that there's a second fireball is gone. Ooh, and there's a Savage Roar. I mean, this game is ended next turn if Florida Gold Coast is not in this game. Oh, there's, there's no way that they can deal 14 damage in a single turn. There's no Fireballs. Yeah, Arcane Blast is only minions, too. It cannot hit players. Such a shame. That card would be so busted. Yeah. Just Malagos Arcane Blast. Malagos would be... 12 damage with Arcane Blast. 12 damage. Yeah. I could take out a Ysera. <laughs> Or a Malagos. <laughs> or a Wrathguard. <laughs> it can take out itself. <laughs> Great play. <laughs> have you shield slammed for lethal yet? Um, no, I have, I have yet to check me across to the red guard or whatever. Well, I can tell you Florida Gulf Coast is not shield slammed for lethal in this game either. And every riddle takes that 2-1 lead now. Very critical spot for them.